Hello everyone, welcome to our special Techno channel. In the previous session, we discussed the OGCWPS interface standard and its operations. In this session, we will learn in detail the types of different categories and various inputs used in the WPS request builder. For more information, watch the rest of this video. In show server, the WPS request builder enables users to perform various geospatial processing operations with different functionality to analyze and manipulate geospatial data. Each category provides a set of specific operations tailored to a range of geospatial tasks. Some categories available in the WPS request builder are JTS, Geo, GS, and WEC. JTS the JTS category uses the Java Topology Suite Library to perform various geometry manipulation and analysis operations such as buffer, intersection, union, simplify, and etc. Geo This category includes geospatial operations that may involve coordinate transformations and special analysis. Some common functions include reproject, centroid, convex hull, and etc. GS the GS or GeoServer specific category uses the GeoTools library and provides a set of geospatial processing operations specifically designed for use in the GeoServer environment. Some common functions include feature count, centroid, buffer feature collection, and etc. WEC This category contains operations specifically designed for working with vector data such as merge, dissolve, aggregate, and etc. Unlike the GS and WEC categories, the JTS and GEO don't have direct access to the layers provided by GeoServer. Instead, this process depends on external libraries rather than utilizing the built-in features of GeoServer. First, we will introduce the inputs of the JTS and GEO categories, and then we will delve into the GS and WEC categories. From the demo menu, navigate to the WPS Request Builder. contains several types of processes which you can view in the Choose Process section. The JTS and Geo categories refer to different sets of processing functions that are specifically dedicated to handling geometries and performing geospatial operations. They accept three inputs for execution, text, reference, and subprocess. Let's explain each of them. Text in text mode, you can enter the data geometry information in one of the standard formats supported by WPS. These standard formats are text slash XML subtype equal GML. This one type indicates that the content is XML formatted as geography markup language or GML. GML is an XML-based format used for representing and exchanging geographic information, including features, geometries, coordinate reference systems, and other special data. Using text-slash-XML suggests that the content is intended to be read as text, which is helpful for debugging and in contexts where human readability is important. The subtype equal GML part specified that this text-XML content conforms to the GML schema or structure. Application slash GML. This one type indicates that the content is a GML document intended for application processing rather than plain text display. Using application instead of text emphasizes that the content is meant for processing by applications, suggesting a more in structure or binary format. This approach is commonly used in API communications where the recipients are expected to process the data programmatically. The main differences between these one types are text slash XML subtype equal GML is more suitable for human readability and debugging, while application slash GML is intended for machine to machine interactions, APIs, and programmatic conception. Use text slash XML subtype equal GML for scenarios that require easy readability or manual processing, and application slash GML for cases where data is consumed directly by applications without being rendered as text. Overall, the choice between the two should be dependent on the intended use case. For human interaction, use text slash XML subtype equal GML. For application oriented needs, choose application slash GML.
Just ever uses two versions of the Gmail MIME type 212 and 311. Although both versions share a common XML namespace, they differ significantly in their element names, schema structure, and support for coordinate reference systems. This announcement in GML311 facilitates more efficient and effective handling of special data, making it a more robust standard for geospatial information. Here is an example of two versions of text slash XML subtype equal GML document. Application slash WKT. The application slash WKT is a MIME type that represents data encoded in well-known text or WKT format. WKT is a text-based format for representing and exchanging geospatial data, particularly geometric shapes and objects. It was initially developed by the OGC and has since become a standard in GIS applications, special databases, and various geospatial data exchange contexts. WKT supports various geometric types, including The application slash WKT and application slash EWKT are two formats used in GeoService WPS for representing geometric data with key differences in the information they provide. The WKT format represents geometric shapes without any associated coordinate reference system data, making it suitable for basic geometry definitions of 2D and 3D objects. The EWKT format enhances WKT by including the Special References Identifier or SRID within the geometry string. This enables users to specify the CRS alongside the geometric data, providing vital conceptual information. Here is an example of the application slash WKT format. Application slash JSON Application slash JSON is a MIME type used to represent data encoded in GeoJSON format. GeoJSON is a standard format for encoding geographic data structures. It's based on the JSON format and allows the representation of simple geographic features aligned with their associated non-special attributes stored in the properties object. The GeoJSON format supports various geometry types such as point, line string, polygon, multipoint, multiline string, and multipolygon. Here is an example of an application slash JSON document. In this example, the GeoJSON document represents a feature collection with two feature objects. The first feature represents a point geometry with the coordinate of San Francisco, and it has additional properties such as the name, population, and elevation. The second feature represents a polygon geometry which is closed shape defining the area of the San Francisco City Hall. It has additional properties such as the name and type of the feature. The application slash JSON MOM type is commonly used in web mapping applications, GIS, and various other geospatial applications because it provides a standardized way to represent and exchange geographic data. Reference the reference mode for specifying input geometry involves linking to an external resource containing the necessary geometry data for processing. This mode is beneficial when the geometry data is stored in a separate file or service, allowing you to provide a reference instead of including the data directly in a WPS request. When using the reference mode for input geometry, you can choose between the GET or POST method to supply the reference. The choice depends on the size and nature of the reference data, as well as any security considerations. GET The GET method includes the reference to an external resource, such as a URL, pointing to a file or service endpoint directly in the request URL. It's ideal for retrieving a small to the moderate size data, as the data is transmitted via URL query parameters. GET requests are generally easier to construct and test, making them ideal for simple and lightly data retrieval. POST The POST method includes the reference to the external resource in the body of the HTTP request rather than in the URL. This method is preferred for larger datasets or when the data being referenced is sensitive or confidential because it keeps the data out of the URL. POST requests are more secure and allow larger amounts of data to be transferred without URL length limitations. When using the reference mode with either the GET or POST methods in the WPS Request Builder, it's essential to include the appropriate parameters to specify the chosen method 
mind type and also in reference to the external resource. The mind type options are GML, WKT, and JSON, which were explained in detail earlier. Subprocess. Using the subprocess mode for input geometry in a WPS request within Java server allows for seamless chaining of multiple processes. It enables you to reference data from another process without writing intermediate results to disk, significantly enhancing workflow efficiency. This approach is particularly beneficial when managing large datasets or executing multiple processing tasks rapidly as it eliminates unnecessary handling steps and facilitates direct data transfer between interconnected processes. In the WPS Request Builder, select Subprocess from the Process Input drop-down menu. Then click the Define slash Edit link to open a new page where you can choose an additional process for chaining. Output. The result output refers to a special data layer typically represented in a vector format such as GML, GeoJSON, or WKT. This output can be processed further, visualized, or utilized in various special analysis. When generating the WPS result geometry, you can choose from several standard special data formats, each described in detail. These formats are Selecting the appropriate format allows you to tailor the output to suit your specific use case or workflow. If you are enjoying the video, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel, like the videos and share it with your friends. This will help you and others to improve your skills and benefit from these valuable resources. Thank you for your support. GSM V categories. These categories are specifically designed to integrate seamlessly with Geo server layers, thereby enhancing the utilization of Geo special data. The GS category includes various Geo server specific operations for interacting with and managing Geo server resources, while the WIC category specializes in vector data processing, offering tools for analyzing and transforming vector geometries. They accept for inputs for execution, text, reference, subprocess, and vector layers. Text. In this mode, you can use various standard formats supported by WPS. These formats are text slash XML subtype equal WFS collection slash 1.0. Using this format allows you to submit a collection of geometries directly from a WFS request to a WPS process in Joe Server. This is useful for passing multiple geometries or feature for processing. When you use a WFS collection as input, you reference a set of geometries that the WPS operation can manipulate directly. The input must adhere to GML format and comply with WFS collection standards. Here is an example of how to use the WFS collection 1.1 in a WPS request. Integrating WFS collection inputs into WPS requests enables simultaneous processing of multiple geometries for complex geospatial analysis. By structuring your XML request correctly and configuring your services appropriately, you can effectively utilize the full potential of OGC standards. Let's review some points with each other. The difference between text slash XML subtype equal WFS collection slash 1.0 and 1.1 is that version 1.1 provides enhanced support for multiple data types, improved handling of features metadata, and greater flexibility in geometries. Text slash XML subtype equal GML represent basic geometry data that often lacks a standardized schema and broader context. In contrast, text slash XML subtype equal WFS collection adheres to the WFS specification and provides the structured collections of geographic features with geometries, attributes, and enhanced interoperability for Joe's special processing task, offering more functionality than the simplistic GML format. The primary difference between application slash WFS collection and text slash XML subtype equal WFS collection is a format and complexity. Application slash WFS collection adheres to a modern standard with enhanced support for complex geometries and better metadata handling, making it suitable for advanced geospatial tasks. In contrast, text slash XML indicates a simpler and older format 
that is more suitable for basic applications or legacy systems. Application/vnd.googlearth.kml plus xml. This format is a MIME type used for representing geospatial data in a keyhole markup language or KML format. This format is primarily associated with Google Earth and various mapping applications. KML enables the encoding of diverse geographic features such as points, lines, and polygons aligned with their associated attributes. It's designed in an XML format that is both human-readable and machine-readable, facilitating easy access and manipulation of geospatial information. Here is an example of how to use this MIME type in a WPS request. The next inputs are reference and subprocess, which have been briefly explained in the JTS and Geo categories. We will explore the functionalities and their importance in detail with examples in the next sessions. Vector layer. This option allows users to utilize predefined geographical data for advanced special analysis, including overlay analysis, buffering, and special query. This access to well-organized data, such as points, lines, and polygons, significantly enhances analytical capabilities compared to relying solely on geo or JTS categories. By integrating vector layer into the WPS request builder, users can perform sophisticated geospatial analysis, enabling deeper insights from their datasets and making GeoServer a preferred choice for complex special processing tasks. Output The result output associated with the GS and WEC categories in the WPS request builder typically provides a special data layer in various vector formats, including GML, GeoJSON, CSV, and Shapefile. This output can be further processed, visualized, or used in other special analysis, making it highly versatile for different applications. When generating geometry, you can choose to output the result in a variety of standard special data formats, including... This flexibility allows you to choose the most appropriate format for your specific use case or workflow, ensuring compatibility with your analysis tools and visualization platforms. By offering these multiple output formats, GeoServer effectively supports a wide range of geoprocessing needs, facilitating seamless integration and analysis of special data. In this session, we discuss the types of different categories and various inputs in the WPS Request Builder. Over the next few sessions, we will take a practical, step-by-step -step approach to learning about the various WPS analysis functions. To learn more about the WPS interface standard and its operations, we recommend watching the suggested video. Have a great time!